Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I am here with a problem on moving pulley. This is a very popular problem. We all who have studied science and engineering in their career would have come across these problems very often uh, starting from their high school itself. But even then, there are still some concepts uh, which, which is not clearly understood uh, well among students and among other audience as well. So I felt like I will solve this problem uh, to clarify a lot of things. And I have a personal opinion. This is a very misused problem because just have a look at this question. I hope you read the problem. The one problem or the one issue with this kind of stating the problem is that th there is no mention about the assumptions. There is no mention that uh, the pulley is a frictionless pulley. There is no mention about whether the string has some specific mass or whether the string can extend or not. Because what happens is uh, in real life when you are into solving a real life problem there may be friction the strings may get extended so when you're solving a real life problem you need to account for all these things uh, so in that regard i believe it's very important to mention all these details like in this problem you can assume that the pulley is a smooth pulley or a frictionless pulley and the string you can assume there is no mass for the strings that's what the light word stands for and you can also assume the spring is an inextensible spring and uh, now you can always ask me what will be the consequences of uh let's say if there is friction in the pulley how my equations are going to change or how my equations are going to change when my string is extending Oh, but I will address all those questions in the next video for the time being before I go ahead and solve the problem I need to drive home one another important point the concept of inertial reference frames why I'm I need I felt like I should spend some time discussing about inertial frame of reference is that you all know Newton's laws are only applicable in an inertial frame of reference. Uh, to us, at least to the problems uh, we deal with, we can assume uh, the earth is stationary and we can assume the earth as an inertial frame of reference. But uh, before that, a frame means, you can always think of that, a frame consists of a clock, to measure the time and a coordinate system and a coordinate system to measure the locations having said what a frame will have or what it will consist of now the next question is when a frame will be called an inertial frame of reference uh, one check you can do is that an inertial frame of reference should be addressed or at the state of uniform velocity. Another check which you can have is, with sitting on that inertial frame of reference, you can look at a body upon which there are no external forces. Then if the body is appearing to you as a stationary one, as a stationary object, then you are, <clears throat> you are sitting in an inertial frame of reference. To uh, drive home that point, let's think of a thought experiment. Say I am driving in this fancy car at an acceleration of 5 meter per second square, which is quite a high acceleration. And I am looking at the signpost, this one. I am pretty sure there are no external forces acting on this. Since I am looking at the signpost sitting inside the car, for me, it will appear as if the signboard is moving in this direction 
with an acceleration of 5 meter per second squared. So, here I am on the driving seat. Uh, pardon me for my poor drawing skills. So, me sitting on this car is not at all an initial frame of reference because definitely I'm accelerating and moreover an object upon which there is no net external force it appears to me as if it is accelerating in the other direction so this is a non-inertial frame of reference but then you can ask me uh, just a minute back you told the earth is an inertial frame of reference but strictly speaking earth is spinning about its own axis earth is rotating about the sun but you're all right but it's an assumption that we make and this assumption uh, is a reasonable one as well so we can consider the earth as an initial frame of reference make sense so there are two important things what is an initial frame of reference and keep in mind that newton's laws are only applicable in an in initial frame of reference make sense now we will go ahead and solve the problem uh, solving the problem is always secondary. Understanding these concepts are more important at least. Uh, that's the way I uh, look at things. Uh, so this is the problem we have. Uh, one important thing, uh, whenever you are solving similar problems, always try to get a feel for the masses of the respective blocks, which it will help you a long way because uh, you know here there is a 5 kg and here there is a 1 kg so definitely the whole system is trying to uh, come down in this direction let's say that acceleration is a prime again you have to be very careful that a prime is the acceleration observed by me standing here on the earth which is an inertial frame of reference make sense this is something you have to always keep in mind Next, you know, now this is accelerating down. What will happen over here? Here there is a 3 kg, here there is a 2 kg. So what happens with relative to this point, there will be some motion here as well, isn't it? It will be there. So what happens? This will try to come down this way. Now, let's say that acceleration is A, but that acceleration is A as observed by a second person B sitting on top of this pulley because for him, this person is sitting on this pulley. He is already accelerating down with an acceleration of a prime downwards then he is looking at these two things and for him this particular mass is accelerating downwards with an acceleration of little a and this will be accelerating with an acceleration of little a but in the opposite direction but you need to keep in one thing you keep you need to keep one thing in your mind this is not an initial frame of reference this is a non-initial frame of reference why because the observer himself is accelerating downwards so you cannot use your newton's laws in this frame of reference but you can use in this frame of reference let's see how i am going to do that uh, for the sake of completeness let's assume T prime is the tension in these strings and T is the tension in these strings. Okay. Now we will start applying our equations. I'm not a big fan of shortcuts. So start, I start with drawing the free body diagrams of individual systems. So first I'll start with M1 mass, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, tension T is acting upward weight is acting downwards but the whole system is accelerating upwards 
with an acceleration of a prime which will get me this equation very straightforward now let's go to the second free body diagram so in the second free body diagram i am focusing in this region be very careful i am focusing in this region let's say there is a mass mp for the pulley then there is a tension t acting upwards then there are two tensions acting downwards and the whole system is accelerating with an acceleration of a prime in the downward direction so the equation should be 2t prime minus t plus mass of the pulley times g is equal to mass of the pulley times a prime isn't it but here what happens mass of the pulley is not given so we have to assume that mp equal to zero so uh, this is where if it was mentioned in the problem that makes the problem look a lot more elegant okay otherwise we need to make keep making these assumptions uh, leave it so which will get to another equation t equal to 2t prime which will be our equation number two equation number one is here this one and now we had we have our second equation as well now going to the most tricky part uh, now we are trying to write equations of motion for these two bodies we need to be careful here why because we need to find their accelerations with respect to an initial frame of reference make sense let's first uh, talk with respect to m2 mass we know when you are observing from here this pulley it is moving upward with an acceleration of a okay but that itself is coming down i mean the pulley itself is coming down with an acceleration of a prime so what will be the net acceleration as seen in the initial frame of reference uh, let's start with this particular mass I'm writing it out for better clarity. Acceleration of M2 as seen by A. So, first is, what is the acceleration of this fellow? It is A prime downward. Then, with respect to this fellow, this mass is moving upwards with an acceleration A. That means, now, let, me, let this be more specific about the direction also. So, here I have written, acceleration of mass m2 as seen by a in the upward direction so what happens a prime will have a negative sign because it is in the downward direction make sense so this will be the acceleration of mass m2 in the initial frame of reference a minus a prime or you can I hope that is clear. I'm not going into equation, but, but this is common sense. First, what you have to see, what you have to look at this, this point, what acceleration it is moving. And then with respect to this point, with what acceleration this mass is moving. When you add those two, you will get the acceleration as seen or as observed by this person A which he is standing in an inertial frame of reference but the person b he is not in an inertial frame of reference why we are doing this exercise because we can only use newton's law in an inertial frame of reference moving ahead now similarly what will be acceleration of mass m3 seen by a in downward direction let's go back so b itself is moving downward with a prime then with respect to b 
this mass m3 is moving downward again with an acceleration of a so the resultant will be a prime plus a so acceleration this will be acceleration of m3 as seen by a in the downward direction make sense now we can apply our equations uh, let's get started now first we will start with this mass we know there is a t prime acting upward m2 minus d is acting downwards this is equal to m2 times the acceleration as seen in an initial frame of reference make sense similar in the upward direction acceleration as seen by the person standing on the initial frame of reference in the upward direction okay that's why all these things are important the minuses the signs all these things are important similarly now uh, for the mass m3 m3 g is acting in this direction downward minus t prime is acting upward that's why the minus sign here it is equal to mass of this the mass m3 times the acceleration of this mass m3 in the downward direction as seen in the initial frame of reference make sense good now it all boils down to working with the equations so these are all the four equations which we got after applying uh, in our uh, after uh, drawing the free body diagrams and then applying the newton second law this was our first equation this is the third second equation these are the third and the fourth equation so what i will do i will bring them down to three equations using clubbing these two together the first two equations i can use then i will reduce the number of equations to three as shown over here then what i am trying to do now i will may uh, remove t prime also from the equations because what i'm interested in is to find a prime so i will remove t prime or i will try to express t prime in terms of a prime which is again very straightforward like this using the first equation now having established an expression for t prime in terms of a prime and other known quantities I will try to substitute this in these two expressions. Then what we will end up with? We will end up with these two equations as shown over here. These two equations. Now I, what I will do? I will multiply with 2 to make it look more easy on your eyes. I can tell like that. Then again I will rearrange the equations then I will end up here now what I have to do very simple thing I will multiply this equation with 6 I will multiply this equation with 4 so that I have uh, a same quantities here so now what I will do now I will reduce if, let's say this is equation number 2 and this is equation number 1 I will reduce this equation from this then what I will end up with? I will end up with this expression. Very simple. I am 2 minus 1 implies this. Now what I have? I have an expression for A prime in terms of all the known quantities. So this is how you solve such problems. Most of the times students don't understand the concept of inertial frame of reference that is one way where the students can get this problem wrong otherwise this is a very straightforward problem where you have to keep applying newton's second law after drawing the free body diagram of each subsystem thanks for watching and uh, this is indeed a very special video for me for multiple reasons thank you thanks for watching happy learning